It's 802. KLK 12.5 FM. Good morning to you on your Wednesday. It's now time for our Wednesday morning Bible study. We have Reverend Dr. Greg Ota in Good the studio morning. joining us. And we have a very special topic. And Reverend Ota's phone likes to lock up quick. We're trying to get it shared on the <laughs> new on his uh, page. Because we are live streaming on Facebook. But this morning we are going to talk about the subject of anxiety. Now, this was not actually one that I picked out. Usually, especially in the beginning phases of the Bible study, I would pick... Um, the topics of, of things that were bothering me or that uh, I needed to uh, know about and uh, he would teach on them but uh, I guess Reverend Ota heard my testimony and service and I guess figured he need to give me a little refresher a little boost so I'm going to talk about anxiety I hope that this blesses each and every one of you out there because there are several of you that are suffering from anxiety and it can it can really be a killer but there but it can also be a cure for it as well so without any further ado let's get into our wednesday morning bible study this is kate ellie kate on 2.5 fm let us pray our father and our god how excellent is your name in all the earth but thank you father for this day thank you for a new day we've never seen before lord god almighty as we come sharing your word with your people they are yours the words are yours now bless us as only you can and take all the glory in jesus name we pray Amen. 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 The subject is anxiety. Uh, to be anxious means I am apprehensive. I am expecting something to happen. Like uh, they say, you are expecting one, one shoe to drop. A lot of people, uh, the devil tells them, you're not going to live long. Uh, you gonna... told me that. Uh huh. He told my children that too. That's a lie from the pits of hell. Because the word of God says that his spirit will not contend with the spirit of man. He gives man 120 years. So that's God saying, that's the maker of humans, saying I give you 120 years. But the devil will come and whisper to people, well, you're going to die at 30, you're going to die at 40, you're going to die at 20. Well, it's a lie because nothing in the Bible backs that up. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. If you are in sin, of course you need to repent. Because eventually sin will kill you before your time. Amen? Amen. But the anxiety that we're talking about today is distress or uneasiness of mind. Caused by fear of danger or misfortune. Especially if it's unfounded. Especially if it's unfounded. Are you on camera looking at it? They yeah. need to see your suit, man. It's it's on there. Can, can I borrow that when I get done here? Sure. Okay. Maybe so, a little, maybe a little snug on you, but that's okay. I'll put it on one arm. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> so the stress and the anxiety is unfounded. It is unfounded because the thing the enemy is telling you is not real. Now, 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 now. When God said he will bless you, you don't buy into that as much as you buy into when the devil tells you you're going to die. The same voice that tells you you are going to die, another voice tells you I'm going to bless you. You would rather dwell on the one that says you're going to die rather than the one that says you're go I'm going to bless you. That's anxiety. That's over-exaggeration of the circumstance beyond what is capable of happening. <laughs> uh, if the Bible, if, if, if the devil was so powerful, every night you go to bed, he'll snuff your lights out. Because sleeping, a sleeping man is a dead man. You don't know where you are. So anything could happen in the spirit. So the devil is not as powerful as we give him credit for. Now I'm really talking about anxiety. If I don't finish it today, we'll finish it some other time. Anxiety has several sources. Information can be misleading. Information is knowledge. Now, I say this often. What you hear is information. What you understand, you believe. What you believe builds your faith. Now, if you believe that you're going to die, you're going to die. That's up to you. Because this Christian work is based on belief, faith. If I believe, I've never been to heaven, but yet I believe there is a God. I have evidences in my life to show me there is a God. 
But if I believe that everybody that crushes at me, their crush is going to be effective, man, I never get off my knees. Here's another form of anxiety. There's spiritual anxiety, there's mental or physical anxiety. You know of people who are afraid of dirt, germs. Do you know do You know this show called Monk? It used to come on years ago. I've heard of it. Okay, Monk is a detective, but he, he had such problem with anxiety and dirt and he was he was he was a freak if you watched him everything he touched had germs in it so he would take plastic put over his head to touch a magazine on somebody else's tip that kind of stuff that's anxiety that's unfounded yet people die in car accidents but yet we get in a car and drive every day we don't consider that now 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 let me tell you what the bible says because some of you listening to me this morning deal with some form of anxiety. The devil tells you you're about to have a heart attack and your heart starts to race. Oh my goodness. It's all in your mind. The biggest battlefield in this lifetime is your mind. Whose report do you believe, Isaiah 53? Do you believe what God has said about you? Or do you believe what the devil is trying to tell you? And which is usually a lie. So the anxiety gets bigger and bigger. Listen to me. It starts small. But if you stay on it, it gets so big you are running out the door screaming. Nothing has happened. It's all in your head. You you have something to say. Um one thing that helps me, but sometimes I do fall off the wagon, and I think that's very important because people can fall off the wagon, especially if a major life-changing event mm-hmm. hits them. But I try to imagine the situation like that. I try to imagine what's going on. Then I try to actually imagine all of the possible outcomes, um, including the worst one. And I'm like, if the absolute worst thing happens, what would be the consequences? And do it objectively. And when I do that... Even if the worst case scenario happens, I realize that it's probably it's something I could deal with. It may not be mm-hmm. as pleasant as I would like, but it won't be the end. And that usually would help me to feel better knowing that okay, if the worst case scenario mm-hmm. happens, I can handle it. But like most likely, usually the worst case doesn't happen. It's usually somewhere in the middle. You may not get the absolute best case. Mm-hmm. You may not get the absolute worst case. It'll probably be somewhere in the middle. So. One of the problems is we let our imaginations run away. In 2 Corinthians 10, it tells us to capture the thought and pull it down and paraphrase it. What does that mean? I don't let this thing go so wild in my head that I'm losing my mind. I need to, I need to like you just said, I need to practicalize what I'm imagining. Okay, so I'm going down the road, I'm going to have an accident. Oh, well, the fender gets brought. You had an accident not too long ago, didn't well, you? Well, I, I had two. Okay. I have, I've <laughs> had one where I bumped into someone, and someone a few weeks later bumped into me. Okay, but nobody died. But you could build it up in your head. You wouldn't even leave your house. Let's, here's what the scripture says about Philippians, in Philippians 4, 6 and 7. It says, be careful for nothing. That means be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Now, this is a mouthful. Let me, let me put it to you this way. If you were to die today, there is nothing you can do to stop it. Hmm. Your best bet is to be in the hands of God. And pray that you die in the hands of God because your time is fulfilled on earth. And then you go home to be with him instead of dying out of fear. Now, the, Bible, we, 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 the, the Englishman says this. A coward dies a thousand times. A hero but, dies once. Just one time. So in other words, whatever you're going to do, devil, bring it on now. But here's the problem. He never brings it on. Hmm. If you understand, if you are a child of God, the devil has lost power over you. You were once dust, now you are seated far above him. So all he has for you are lies. Anxiety is a lie. Your heart is about to explode. It didn't happen. He told you that yesterday and you panicked. Today he's telling you the same thing, you panic. Why are you panicking? If he was so powerful, why didn't he do it yesterday? So the Bible says, be careful. For, don't, be, don't let people lie to you. But in everything by prayer and supplication, what does this mean? 
Look, if I'm anxious about dying, listen to me very carefully. The only reason why a dog will chase you is because he knows you're afraid of it. When you start running towards the dog, the dog will run away from you. If you live in the fear of death, you can't function. If you live in the fear of failure, you can't function. But if you live as a child of God, who is in Christ Jesus, who Christ has all the solutions there is. Some things we go through are to strengthen us. So if I pray and put it in his hand, I don't need to be anxious. Whatever will happen, let it happen in Jesus' hand. Y'all don't hear me this morning. First Peter 5, 7. And it reads, Casting all your care upon him, for mm -hmm. he cares for you. Mm -hmm. So, what is my care? Well, the anxious moments are usually, and I'm speaking to someone specifically. My heart is going to explode. I'm going to have a heart attack. Well, I'm feeling this thing. I'm feeling that thing. Put it on Jesus and be done with it. So you die, you die. Look, you need to get to where I'm telling you. If you're afraid of something, you will always be afraid of it. But when you take the power out of the thing, you're no longer afraid of it. I'm not going to share my dog story on the, on the radio today, <laughs> but I've shared it several times where I, I ran heart. into a dog and I didn't back up. The dog had to back up and I had no instruments in my hand because I had to kill the fear because I couldn't run. That scripture, Hebrews 13, 6. And it reads, So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Okay, so what can I do to you, Legazi? What can I physically do to you? What's the worst I can do to you? You could kill me. Okay, so what happens after you die? You go to heaven. All right. So, but if God is on your side, do you think I could kill you? Nope. If God says it's not time for you to die, you think I could kill you? No. Nope. Okay. It won't work. Oh, it won't work. I will always miss. People have pointed guns at some other people and pulled the trigger. Nothing happened because gun, it gun, wasn't their time. Gun jam up or Amen. Something. Bullet something. miss. Amen. <laughs> John fourteen twenty seven, and it reads, mm -hmm. "Peace I leave with you. Mm -hmm. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you." Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Okay. So what is Jesus? This is Jesus speaking. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. What's his peace? Whatever he was doing, he was doing in God. He only did what God told him to do. So he wasn't afraid of anything. I wish somebody would get this. If God of the universe is in your ear telling you what to do, you have nothing to be afraid of. Why? Because everything that's going to come against you, he made. He can control them. The only time that you go the wrong way is if you stop listening. I tell people all, this all the time. I, I was raised in Nigeria, so I know my way around Nigeria. I don't care how educated or how talented or how strong you are. If I take you to Nigeria the first time, if you don't listen to my instructions, you're going to get in trouble or you're going to get lost. So God created the heavens and the earth. He knows about everything. He knows about every danger that can come upon you. So if you listen to him, even the dangerous things won't touch you. Look at Daniel. He was thrown in the, in the lion's den. Now, if he was afraid, he would have died before they put him in there. But he survived it. Because God made him look like a lion to the rest of the lions. They couldn't eat him. Let me stop. Psalm 32 verses 8 through 10. Anxiety. That's what we're talking about. And it reads, I will instruct thee mm -hmm. and teach thee in a way in which thou shalt go. Did you see that? So if I'm listening to God's instruction, what am I anxious about? Keep reading. I will guide thee with mine eye. Mm -hmm. Verse 9. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle. Mm -hmm. Yeast they come near unto thee. Mm -hmm. And 10 is, many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. Okay. We, we, we talk about these things, and, and sometimes we don't have full understanding. If my instructor, if I want to fly an airplane, let me use that as an example, and I have uh, a seasoned pilot sitting next to me, and he said, push this lever, flip this one up, flip that one down. As long as I'm flipping and, and turning and pressing and doing everything he says to do, I'm flying. I have no fear of crashing. 
Because I know the instructor sitting next to me knows how to fly this plane. Y'all don't hear me this morning. God knows what you can be anxious about. He said, listen to my instructions. I will tell you what to do. The anxiety will go away. As long as you have a handle on what you're doing, well, like I see my son here, used to have issues. We talk about it all the time. It doesn't come up anymore because he's no longer anxious about those things. To him, before we started talking, it was a big deal. We got to do this. We got No, we don't got to do that. Look what happened the last time. Oh, yeah. Just knowledge. Just knowledge. And who you listen to will take care of your anxiety. Last scripture because we're running out of time. All right. And this is John 14, 1 through 4, I believe. Mm -hmm. Let not your heart be troubled. Mm -hmm. You believe in God. Also believe, believe also in me. That's Jesus talking. In my father's house are mm -hmm. many mansions. Mm -hmm. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that ye may be also. Okay. And whither I go, ye know, mm -hmm. and the way ye know. All right. So Jesus said in 14.6, that I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. So how do we combat anxiety? Romans 8.1, I'll read that very quickly. Therefore, there is... There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That's self-explanatory. If I do what God says do, I don't need to be afraid of what man can do to me. Man is inferior to God. Amen? Amen. All right. Stay in the presence of God through prayer. First Thessalonians 5.17. It says, pray without season. Pray without season. Am I out of time? I've got about 11 seconds. Okay. Read and study the Bible. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Stay in your Bible, folks. Stay in your Bible. One of the cures for anxiety, stay in your Bible. Would you lead them in a sinner's prayer for those who don't know Christ, who need this peace? And I'm a testimony, and definitely the peace has helped me mm. a lot. So here's how you can uh, get this, just by simply praying this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. I come to you today as a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Forgive, forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. I believe you died for me. Make me a child of God. Make me a child of God. For on the third day you rose again. For on the third day you rose again. That I might be justified. That I might be justified. I believe I'm born again. I believe I'm born again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. 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 If you prayed that prayer, you are born again. Find a Bible teaching, believing church, and join. And grow and see the destiny God has prepared for you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, God, thank you for reminding us about anxiety and what you have said about anxiety. You have all the answers in your hands, Father, and we are yours. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is depend on you. Bless this day. Bless the work of our hands and take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be blessed. Okay. All right, we okay. got a couple of Facebook shout-outs. Shout-out to Salika Craig, Chris Nash, and Cadillac Chris who says, good morning, KLK. Well, good morning, and thank each and every one of you for tuning in. I hope that you all were blessed by this Bible study. Feel free to share it. It's on our Facebook page. Uh, Amen. It's, going, it's on the New Life Empowerment Facebook. It's going to be on the New Life Empowerment website, the KLK website. So you got lots of places in which you can get it. Got lots of places. Thank you, God for That for you can get it and um, share it. So stay tuned. This is All Gospel Wednesday. So we got gospel all day long up until 8 o'clock p.m. to lift and inspire you. May God bless and keep each and every one of you. This is Kate, L.E.K., on 2.5 FM.